Um, my name is Daniela and I'm really a sensible person. So I think it's easier for me to use a reader response criticism. I see the reader as the most important person in function of the book, the one that gives meaning to the book and existence to the work. And I don't think it's an easy approach. I just think you would really need to have a connection with your emotions and know how to interpret how you feel. And I found a definition for the reader response that said it's an anarchic subjectivism. And I really like that because it means it gives the reader the control of the book. So in the second chapter, there were a few things that stood out for me. For example, the fact that Gregor doesn't really seem concerned about his condition. And I clearly remember the part where he couldn't eat the sweetened milk, so he just waited and hoped his sister would have the, the idea of bringing him more food, that his sister would understand him without him saying anything. And thankfully, the sister did and brought him more food, but what would have happened if she wasn't there and or she understood the the fact of him not drinking the milk as just him being mean or him not wanting to wanting to eat at that moment. I also clearly remember when her his sister and his mom started taking out stuff from his room and the mom was really thinking about him as a human being and his sister was thinking of him just as a bug who needed a space to crawl up on the walls. I think she started viewing him just as a pet. He didn't do anything about it. I think his life has always been a routine. Like he used to work, take orders from his boss, and he was just working to give his life, his family a good life. He wasn't working for a goal. He wasn't working for himself. He was working because he had to. So he worked, he went home, he slept, he worked, he went home, he slept, He's, he well, he ate and everything, but his life was a routine. And when he became a bug, his life was also a routine. He was just fed, he was in his room, he was in the couch, he was looking out of the window, but he was still stuck as he was before. And I do believe he felt really lonely, because imagine you're not a human anymore and you're in the bug. There is no one out there in the world who could even grasp or who could even try to understand what you were going to. So it does make a bit of sense he was just like taking it easy and letting things happen one after the other. And one of the questions I found I could answer with my reader response criticism is explain a character problem, offer a solution. For me, the problem is his attitude. He's just waiting. He's just trying to show he still has a consciousness. Like, I would really like for his sister to just come in and go like, well, if you can understand me, Gregor, go to the left to say yes, go to the right to say no, try to have communication with him. And he did try to protect like his picture of the woman, but he ended up just making a scene for his whole family. So the only time he actually tries to make something or do something and it backfires. But, he, I mean, I do believe he could try to talk or maybe try to write or maybe have like a Morse cut. I, he's a smart man. There's alternatives. Another question I could answer is, pick a character you didn't like, his dad. When he came back home and Greta couldn't explain to him that he was out of the room and he scared his mother, he just went after him, just trying to hit him, just trying to, I don't know, maybe kill him. And he's not thinking about that boy as his son. He's thinking it about as invader, something that's not his blood, something that's not related to him. A problem that has to be eradicated. Another question that came with uh, when I searched for real response analysis is uh, make predictions about this story. Well, I haven't gone much farther from chapter two and I know it's a famous book but I've never like 
read about the ending or I don't know what's the real ending but I don't believe he's going to turn back to a human I don't really see a process of him changing his mind or any reason why he's a bug so I don't think it can be reversed I don't think he will just walk up, wake up one day as a human and go like you know what, I need to change my life I don't want to work in this anymore I want to do this or that, no I think he's gonna die as a bug but I think his dad maybe is gonna kill him well, his sister, I think she's gonna go away so her mother and his his mother and his father are gonna stay with him to take care of him and his mother maybe will grow a costume but I do believe his father will come on come home one night drunk or accelerated and realize he can just keep caring for a book that he believes is not his son so his father is gonna kill him maybe he's gonna start losing all the consciousness he has because first he lost his body then he couldn't talk then he couldn't move as a normal human being then he started crawling so maybe he's gonna slowly slowly become more of a bug until he, maybe he starts shrinking could be I do see him dying as a normal bug also we have Explain the reasons why you have chosen this criticism method to analyze the metamorphosis. So, I've chosen this criticism because there's a lot of feelings in the book. I think I'm reflecting myself too much when I say that he should do something because I've been in the position where I'm trapped. I have no decisions over my body, over my food over my future and I did the same thing as him I just stay back and let people decide over me without taking a stand ever so it's a book it's a fictional story I would like him to stand up for himself something that I couldn't do when I was in a similar situation also because I don't know Kafka that well and even when it would be interesting to know like he, he was like miserable in his life we learned that from the drawings but I believe that writing is a way to escape so even if he could have like mm, expressed the way he was suffering and the way he felt through the story I don't believe he did I know I didn't choose a psychological approach, a psychoanalytical approach, because even if I really, really like them, I don't feel prepared. I know we're gonna have a psychology class in the future, so maybe when I know a bit more about human emotions, and more about Freud, and more about our responses to, to trauma, our responses to certain stimuli, if I knew more about the human mind, maybe I could analyze it that way because I think there's a lot in the book that could work with this criticism. But I just I just wanted to talk about how it makes me feel. I don't like a lot of things about the plot, but I think they work for the story. So it's not the way I would like to feel, but it's the way I feel because it's where the writer is taking me to feel. And I know that because I found that criticism Reader criticism response. It has three like main causes. One of them is one that is focused on the individual, the reader's interpretation of the text. Other one is a psychological reader criticism that talks about the reader's state of mind. They believe like the way our mind is set before we read the book is gonna express through our interpretation, and I do believe that, as I said, with my own experience. And it's why do I feel this way? Uh, the motives that I have to interpret the book that way, and another bifurcation of the reader response is the uh, one that is focused on the text. Like they believe that in this kind of reader response, the text is the one that guides the 
breather and puts them in a situation and makes them feel that way, but that the text and the reader complement each other, that the work is not done until the reader feels that way. We fulfill the work of that the writer started. What pros and cons did I find while using this method? I think it leaves me a bit short. I think it would be better if we could use two criticisms to compare one point of view with the other because I would also have liked to use the feminist approach like why is the sister the one who is caretaking? Why is the mother the one who's fragile? Why is the dad the strong one? Why is the dad the one who's aggressive? Why isn't the mother the one who gets angry and tries to hit him? Why is she the one who's pleading the father to wait, please don't kill your son? Why is the female always in that position of being the sentimental one, of being the sweet one, of being the caretaking one? Hmm? <laughs> um, so I think that for future literal criticisms, I will try to write the criticism from different approaches and see which is the one that I can take most out of. Like for example, would I have done a longer presentation if I had chosen another criticism? Maybe so, but I won't know because I didn't try to do it with each one of them. I just chose reader response criticism as quickly as I could because I like to talk about my feelings. So maybe try to set my feelings apart and try to be an objective person for once because that brings me a lot of trouble in other subjects and assignments. So optional, suggest about improving or modifying the approach. I think it's an excellent approach. If you have the time, if you want to open yourself, if you really believe that the reader is the most important being in a text or if well, yeah, because if you believe the author is the most important part, then this criticism may not work with you. If you do like to analyze the rhetorics used, this may not also work with you. I don't like to do that. I just like to know how I feel with them. I want to hear the pretty words and have a feeling out of them. I don't want to analyze the words to know what's the rhetoric behind them also really fearful of being wrong so i guess the real response is also so, sort of like a shield because this is my opinion you can't tell me i'm wrong you can tell me i'm missing this and that but am i wrong i can be wrong it's the real response criticism so it's based on my opinion and my feelings yeah thank you for watching this i dressed up for you so hope you like my video